So, we all have some things in common. First of all, we love science. We love maths. We love Lego. We're all kind of geeks by nature. We love gadgets. We love art. We love understanding the world. We love breaking the world. And we really, really love, love uh, reshaping the world. So every day I hear about all these amazing inventions and ideas that are different. And they, most of them come from Karen and previous Imperial College students. Um, these ideas turn into startups that become more, more and more popular and turn into really massive companies or they're being acquired by colossal companies like Facebook and Google. Um, my first day at Google, I saw two men that seemed very, very familiar. So these people were invigilating me when I did my master's at Imperial College. So this was Douglas the Douglas and Jagger and Ashley Brown. I asked them if they were graduate hires or interns at Google, and they said that their company had been acquired. Of course, I didn't believe them, and I had to look them up. And I saw that actually their company that was founded by five Imperial College students was acquired. So Spider.io was an ad fraud company, and within three years of functioning, uh, they had offers from five different companies. Two weeks ago, it was announced that Surreal, um, Surreal Vision was acquired by Oculus, and a couple of years ago, um, Monoedix was acquired by Facebook. But it's not just companies that start and be acquired by bigger companies. Um, so Entrepreneur First is a program that helps early stage startups get funding and grow as much as they can. So Entrepreneur First is very, very interested in Blocks, which is another Imperial College startup, and Magic Pony Technology, which is doing upscaling for videos. So all my life I have been uh, surrounded by people that have amazing talent and that are very, very creative and very successful. And the scientific side of me wanted to understand what it is that makes them so successful. So I think I tried to create an algorithm in my mind that kind of explains success and talent. Um, the very, very first interaction I had with talent was when I was at school. I was eight years old and there was a little boy in the same school bus as me. And he was sitting in his seat and every day he would do that. And I thought that was some sort of a tick that he had. But two weeks later, I realized that there was a pattern in the movements of his fingers. So I sat next to him and I said, OK, what are your hobbies? What are you doing? Where is that? And that little boy was composing music in the school bus. And I'm not even kidding. So I looked him up a couple of years later, and he's actually now in Juilliard teaching. So I'll try to explain what, how I, I perceive talent and success. So I think the most important component is to be inspired. I don't know if, how many of you like computer games. Who, how many of you know The Sims? OK, <laughs> perfect. I'm not as old as I thought. OK. <laughs> so, the Sims, so this is a life simulation game, and The Sims have um, certain needs that they need to fulfill. And if you fulfill all their needs uh, to the maximum, you can get them in an inspired mode. If they are in the inspired mode, um, they can gain double the points. So they can like, play chess and be very, very smart. They can play music and they can master everything. So I think that similarly to The Sims, we kind of become inspired and we get into this inspired mode that then leads us to be motivated. But what exactly is motivation? So the way I see motivation is that it's basically the, the basic drive of all of my actions. When I was 18, uh, I knew I wanted to do something I love. I just didn't know what that was. So I think it's very, very important to be honest to yourselves about what is important to you. And if you're not honest, you might find yourselves in a position where you're acting on weaker motives. And if you act on weaker motives, then the strong ones are one day going to interrupt your progress. So it's very, very important to identify what is important to you. And you really don't want to undercut on your motivation. You really want to reach the full of your potential. So I think you really need to establish goals that are based on these values, your needs, your desires, your ambitions, and your aspirations. Another game, Lemmings. How many know that? OK, I am old. <laughs> Three people. OK, so the Lemmings. The goal of this game is you have a group of uh, humanoid lemmings, which is like a tiny brainless animal, let's say. Mm -hmm. And you need to guide them to uh, a designated exit, but you need to avoid some obstacles that exist there. So basically, you start off the game by the lemmings walking and falling to their death. So when we set our goals and have some motivations, we accelerate and we, we, we have an idea of what we want to do. But if we don't have a plan, this is what's going to happen to us. Not literally, but. Um, 
So I really loved computer science and I loved computers and I knew that this is what I wanted to do. But I found myself studying something totally random. I was in economics. I liked it, but I wasn't 100% passionate about it. So in the Lemmings example, you could build bridges and you could plan their way to the exit. So what I decided to do was I made a list of all the jobs that would be ideal for me, my dream jobs. And I, I said, okay, I'm not qualified for any of these jobs. What do I have to do? So I decided to wait. So basically I realized that I'm cur I was currently in, a, in an undergrad program that was not what I wanted to do. I, s I thought to myself and said, okay, if I do super well and finish it as fast as possible, and if, it, if that hypothesis is true, then I will be able to study what I want. So that's when I applied to the conversion program of Imperial College, which um, it, it was a very a nine month, a very, very intensive program that led me to computer science. So controlling gravity. I was very, very lucky because after I finished my master's, I was offered to do a PhD in computer science and then I ended up doing an internship at Facebook London and now I'm working for Google full time. So these dreams for me were impossible. I didn't ever think I would be able to do this kind of thing. So I met a lot of people that said, oh, I'm going to win and I'm amazing. I'm going to land the dream job. But at the end of the day, it's the people that do the work that actually win. So when you have your plan in mind. You have to put your head down and do the work that you need to do. And you have to be very, very focused and, and keep maintaining progress on whatever it is that you're doing. Don't drown in opportunity. So the lemmings can drown, okay? If they go in water, they can drown. Oh, yes. Um, fresh minds like you, like, uh, like all of you that are here. We see opportunities every day next door. So like someone is going to come and say, hey, I'm running a new startup. Do you want to join? And you might have 10 more things running at the same time. Do not drown in opportunity. The new cool and amazing projects can wait. You can finish the current cool projects that you're working on. Do not drown in opportunity because this is a huge danger, especially in a college like this where talent is everywhere. So things are going to go wrong. Um, you are going to make mistakes. You are going to kill all your lemmings. <laughs> the best advice was given by my boyfriend that he said that in order to maintain forward motion, you need to mind the baby steps. So it's very, very important to, to look at A, B, C and C in order for you to achieve your goals. What do you need to do in order to, in order for you to pass the interviews in all these like massive companies or anything that you set your mind on? What do you need to do? You need to, to, to read about like a 101 computer science, like set the baby steps. So decisions, you are going to make wrong decisions. So this is actually a video. I'm not sure if it plays. It doesn't. Okay, that's fine. So in that game, um, something that can go really, really wrong is if you can pressure, if you press that button that's on the top right, on the bottom right. So if you press that button, a countdown appears on top of the lemmings and they all basically commit suicide. So that is something. Oh, there you go. OK, we can see it. Yes. So this is a mistake you can make, OK? <laughs> so things can go wrong, and they are going to go wrong, and you are going to make mistakes. But we cannot live in an, uh, an unrealistic world where there is no need for mistakes or problems. So a wrong decision will always be better than no decisions at all. If you're troubled, don't stay idle. Just try find people around you, get advice. Just keep moving forward, even if that's with baby steps. I was very, very scared because from economics, I decided to do a PhD in computer science, which <laughs> was a, a really scary thing. So the advice that I have to give you about such um, issues is the less you know, the better it's going to be. So the less you know uh, and the bolder you are, everything's going to go fine. So um, I'm not saying things are going to be easy. Uh, things are going to be very, very tough. Um, I was doing a PhD. I was working at the same time. Um, my contract was ending. Uh, I didn't have full funding for my PhD. So there are going to be many, many problems. And one day you will just want to quit everything and say, OK, I don't want to do that anymore. I'll just go to a beach later. So this is why you need friends and you need 
people that think like you, that can motivate you. This is when you need family. Um, these people are going to be your parachute. If you cannot control gravity anymore, they are going to control it for you. So don't shut them out if you're too busy. Let them in, even if that's like calling them or texting them once per day or something. They are going to be there in the parachute. That's very, very important. So Andy Warhol said that every person in the world is going to be famous for at least 15 minutes in th his entire life. I say that if you plan this properly, you can be famous not just for 15 minutes. You can actually control this. So first of all, forget about what's right and wrong. You will never know if what you're doing right now is right or wrong until it's too late. So don't care about that. Just go with your logic. Second of all, there are no shortcuts. You have to do the work. You have to put yourself in a place where when the luck strikes, you're going to be there to grab the opportunity. Very, very, very important. This is it. Make it count. Uh, some people are not given second or third chances. And I think that we're in a country where we can achieve amazing things. Uh, the people sitting next to you might be the next CEOs or the amazing professors that are going to make a huge change in the entire world. Win battles before you take on new battles. As I said, there are so many opportunities every day. Um, you receive emails about jobs, about new projects. Do not, do not drown in opportunity. That's a very, very important thing. Talk to people more, make friends and work with them. So I've been attending some hackathons and in the hackathons we spent like eight hours of working together and creating an app. And it's a pretty, it's a fun event. It's not aimed to like lean into something different. I met some amazing people in the hackathons and I've been, well, one of the TED Talks actually <laughs> took place because I met someone at the hackathon. Um, so very, very important. Make friends, work with them. Family, the best inspiration of all. If without my family, I don't know where I would be. So controlling gravity is essential. We have the resources. Um, it's really, really easy in this world to be identifiable and, and so to reach out to people, and do stuff. Make it count, because life is not a rehearsal. This is it. And that's what I have to say. And thank you so much. <laughs>